in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the ocean, and it would obey you. In another place, Jesus said, If your faith is as small as the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to say to the mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Really? Que bueno! If this were to be a television show, I bet you Jesus would have added, Please don't try this at home. Do you have faith? Have you ever tried commanding a tree to be uprooted and replanted somewhere else? What about any of the saints or the apostles or Jesus himself? Have you heard of any of them uprooting a tree or moving a mountain by word of mouth? Is it a case that they do not have faith? Have you imagined how crazy it would be if we all begin to move trees and mountains with words of our mouth? Maybe I find a tree I like on your property. At night, I would command the tree to be uprooted and planted on my property. And then the next morning, when you wake up and discover what has happened, you will command the tree to come back to your property. How crazy would that be? This is not an invitation for us to ask God to do what is unreasonable. This is not a call for us to obtain cheap miracles from God. The mulberry tree has a very deep and extensive root system such that it is impossible to uproot it to take it out from a place with entire roots and replant it somewhere else and so when jesus uses this imagery the message is passing across is if we have faith as little as a mustard seed we'll be able to do that which the world sees as impossible. Jesus used this imagery on his way to Jerusalem while he was instructing his disciples on the demands of discipleship. He started by telling them that the punishment for anyone who leads someone else into sin will be worse than being thrown into the ocean with a millstone around the neck. He went on again to tell them that as his disciples, it was their responsibility to correct those who go wrong and also to forgive those who ask for pardon. Having heard this, the apostles must have taken a deep breath and turned to one another and whispered to one another, This is serious. What did we just get ourselves into? And then they turned to Jesus to make their requests. Please increase our faith because the demand of discipleship is so much that we cannot live up to. We need more faith. In response to them, Jesus said, it is not the amount of faith that you have that counts. What matters is what you are ready to do with the little faith that you have. And so he said, If your faith is as little as a mustard seed, you will be able to move mountains and uproot trees. 
The apostles were overwhelmed when they heard the demands of discipleship. About 600 years before the time of the apostles, the prophet Habakkuk was also overwhelmed by all that was going on in his community. It was during the reign of King Jehoiakim. He saw all that was going on, the injustice, the discrimination, the oppression of the poor. And so on behalf of the people, the prophet Habakkuk turned to God and cried out, How long will this last? How long will the people continue to suffer? In answer to Habakkuk, God said, One, you may not expect an immediate change. Two, the people must not lose courage. Three, at my appointed time, I am going to intervene. Four, and when I intervene, the just, the good people, we will live, they will triumph, they will be rewarded, while the wicked will be shamed. My dear friends, we have different names, our faces are different, and so are our stories. I do not know at this point in time what you are going through. I have no idea what trees, what mountains you would like to be uprooted from your life at this time. Maybe it has to do with your health. Maybe it has to do with your finances, your family, your relationship, your education, a false allegation you are dealing with, bullies, our current political systems, the leaders that we have now, addiction, just name it. Whatever the mountain is, whatever the tree is, Maybe you have reached the point where, like Habakkuk, you would like to cry to God, How long? How long will the wicked continue to reign? How long will the hidden ask us, Where is the God that you serve? And like God said to Habakkuk, God is telling you the same thing. Do not be discouraged. Do not give up. I will intervene at my own appointed time. And St. Paul in the second reading will add, fan into flame the gift that you have in you. Divine intervention is certain, but the question is, will you be ready to keep hanging in there until the time that God would intervene? Will you be there when finally God will give answers to your questions? Remember the story of Joseph. His brothers sold him into slavery, believing that that was going to kill his dreams. But Joseph continued to hang on to God. Even at, point, at the point where it seemed like God had abandoned him to suffer innocently, he held on to God. And when the appointed time came, Joseph was promoted from the prison to the palace. He became a governor and his brothers came over to Egypt to bow before him and to seek his help. My dearly beloved in Christ, you have all that it takes to succeed. Make the best of all that is available to you. Do not give up on your dreams. Remember what they say. Good things come to those who wait patiently. However, the best things come to those who pray while they wait. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.